I'm Travis with CP Mobile RV Repair, and today we're going to show you how RV electrical systems work. Here I have what is essentially a complete RV electrical system laid out on this board. RVs come in lots of different shapes and sizes, so your RV may vary slightly from this system, but the principles are generally the same. This system is modeled after what we typically see in a travel trailer or a fifth wheel in most smaller motorhomes. This is not a technical instruction video, so some parts of this system have been simplified or small components left out for the purposes of the video. The purpose of this board is to demonstrate how power flows through the system, so some parts have been simplified for that purpose. RVs have dual voltage power systems. They use both 12 volt DC or direct current power, which is supplied by the RV batteries, and 120 volt AC or alternating current power, which is supplied by the power grid or a generator if we have a built-in generator in our RV. I have laid everything out here so that power flows from left to right for both systems on this board. <clears throat> the upper section of the board contains the 120 volt power system. The lower section contains the 12 volt DC power system. And in the middle here, we have the power distribution panel for both systems. First, let's quickly go over what components use 120 volt AC power and what components use 12 volt DC power. The 12 volt DC system includes all of the interior and exterior lights, our water pump, the thermostat for the air conditioner and furnace, the circuit board for the fan and furnace, the circuit boards that control the water heater and fridge, excluding residential fridges, the radio, the water pump, the tank heaters, the slide outs, TV antenna booster, and the leveling system if equipped. The 120 volt AC system includes the transfer switch, our converter, which charges our batteries, not an inverter, which we will cover in future videos, the heating elements for the fridge and water heater, the rooftop air conditioner, the microwave, and all of our 120 volt outlets. Now that we know what runs on 12 volt and 120 volt, we can look at 12 volt power flow starting with the batteries. Here we have two Battleborn lithium batteries, which are the best lithium batteries on the market, in my opinion, and that's why we're using them today. And we'll be doing more videos in the future where we do some testing with these batteries. There will be a link in the description below to the Battleborn website if you would like to purchase them. Power flows from these batteries up through these red and black wires into our power distribution center, comes in up top here to these connections, and then goes out through these individual fuses and then through these smaller wires over to our components. We have our light here and we have our water pump. Any other 12 volt components will have individual fuses that just go down the line here and individual wires that run out to those components. So this allows us to bring all of our power in, split it up into smaller individual circuits and send it out to our individual components. There are some cases where certain components may pull power here before we hit the power distribution box from the batteries. Um, in this case, that we use an inline fuse or circuit breaker to protect those circuits. This is common for larger circuits, such as a slide out motor or a hydraulic pump for a leveling system. Okay, now for the 120 volt portion. This system is wired as a 30 amp service. So we use this wire, which has an orange insulation on it and has three wires inside. So everywhere in this 120 volt system, you see this orange wire, this is what we have. If you have a 50 amp RV, Power flow is all the same, but we use this wire, which has black insulation on it, and we actually have four wires inside, and it runs into our power distribution uh, just like this does, with the exception of, instead of a single 30 amp breaker here, you will have two 50 amp breakers here, and then you have your second bank of breakers on this side, since we have two hot leads coming in on a 50 amp service. Starting on the left side, we have a shore power inlet up top, which we would plug in with an extension cord to your house, an RV park, or a portable generator. And below that, we have a circuit to represent a built-in generator that we would find in a toy hauler or on most motorhomes. Both of those run to our transfer switch. The transfer switch will only allow power from one power source to pass through, never both power sources. If your RV doesn't have a built-in generator and is not pre-wired for a generator, it will not have a transfer switch. So power from the shore power inlet will go directly to our power distribution panel. If we continue down the line, we see that the wires come in and connect to the main 30 amp breaker, which is connected to a metal bar on the back side of our power distribution panel. And all of the breakers connect to that bar. So power comes in through our main 30 
and goes out into individual circuits through our smaller breakers. I have connected lights to each outlet so we can see where the power goes as I turn on these breakers. I'm gonna plug this system in and we'll turn them on. Here we have the most common circuits that you will find in an RV. Our first one here represents our microwave, which is generally on a dedicated breaker, meaning the only the microwave is connected to that breaker and nothing else. The next one for our AC unit, which is also typically a dedicated breaker. This one is for our GFI circuits, which you will typically find in wet locations, such as a kitchen or bathroom. And it's important to note that we only have one GFI style outlet in this circuit but we have outlets downstream that are protected by this GFI outlet. So if we trip this, all of the outlets on this circuit lose power. Uh, these outlets downstream should have a sticker on them in your RV that says GFI protected. Our last circuit breaker is our general and converter. When the converter has 120 volt provi power provided to it, it now can charge our batteries through the red positive wire here, which feeds up and connects to where this red wire goes back and connects to the batteries. The black negative wire connected at this terminal is also tied in. This is our ground junction, and this typically happens on the metal frame of the RV. That covers everything for this video. I hope it helps you better understand how your RV works. We have some more videos coming out that show you how two different types of RV inverters integrate into the system. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see those. And if you have anything else you'd like to see, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.